All right, in this video, I'm gonna be helping Amber. She posted a question in a group about her Epson uh, EcoTank. She has a 2760, I have a 2720. They're not that different. And I rarely use mine. I just printed off this diagnostic image. And as you can see, my cyan is not looking too good. The yellow is also a bit off. Now her magenta is off. And she was thinking that it was her computer. It's not her computer. It will be your computer if you have lines that go across on even spacing. If you are printing with Wi-Fi. Uh, it can also be a setting on your computer if you have it set to print in draft mode. If it is a computer problem, you are going to typically have discoloration so a difference from what you have on your screen to what you have coming out of the printer and that comes down to calibrating your monitor and making sure that your image file is set to the right profile and when you print that it's set to the right management but when you print a diagnostic image like this and you see that one of your colors is gone it is definitely a printer problem now depending on your printer, what type of ink you have in it, and how often you use it, you're going to have uh, clogged print heads. I rarely use mine. I've, I've had mine for a few months here. Uh, first time printing was in March 10th. It's now June 2nd, and I've printed 20 pages, so not very much. Meanwhile, with my Canon right here, I print almost every single day, and I never have a clog. I'm using OEM inks in the Canon. I also have another Canon here. I'm going to be doing a video on about that later. That's the newest Canon Eco EcoTank. And I've got this Epson here. So what you want to make sure is that you are printing regularly. Now, she just put sublimation inks into her printer. And it's like day three for her. So that would tell me a couple of things. One... The ink that she's using is not very high grade. Maybe she even put the wrong ink in. Or um, there could be some air in the line. And so what I would recommend, I will go to look at the settings on the printer itself and we'll see if we can make some diagnosis that way. Okay, here we are at the control panel of the Epson. This should look somewhat familiar. Now I just printed a um, diagnostic image from the menu here to show me if there was any clogged print heads um, or missing segments like I showed you. Yes, there are. So we are going to click OK and then it is going to ask to clean the print head. Once it goes through this, um, then it's going to print another diagnostic image. And because I'm using this for sublimation, um, I'm just going to be printing on regular paper instead of sublimation paper. So this takes a little bit of time. Um, we're gonna go ahead and skip ahead after this and see what happens next. Okay, it's coming through. It's just about done. It's gonna make all kinds of noise while it's cleaning the print heads. And basically what it's doing is it's expressing ink through the print head and it has kind of a cleaning blade and a pad. All right, so now we are going to, um, it says cleaning complete, check if nozzles are not clogged. So we're gonna print um, a nozzle check. Now I understand that Amber, you've probably already done this, but I just wanna go through um, for other people that might be watching this as well. All right, so for me, as you can see, obviously um, I have fixed the problem just by running a uh, cleaning cycle. Obviously this didn't work for you, um, which I know can be frustrating because why, <laughs> why wouldn't it work? I'll put a link to the inks that I'm using and I'm curious to know, uh, let me know what inks you are using because there are some less than desirable inks out there. Okay, so it's not missing any segments, so we're gonna go ahead and click no. But I wanna take you through um, kind of what to expect here, or what you, some of your options on your Epson. You have 
maintenance. So if you just go click home and then over to the settings page and then right next to that you have maintenance. Nozzle check, that's the first thing that we did. Head cleaning, you try that. Obviously that uses the least amount of ink. Power cleaning will use a lot more ink. You can try this. Uh, print head alignment. This is an important feature and that may be your problem. We're going to go ahead and do a print head alignment even though I don't need to. I just want to show you um, some of the things. You have a vertical and a horizontal alignment. Okay, so go ahead and go through those because you could just have misaligned nozzles. I'm doubting it, but it's worth going through and just being very thorough. Okay, so here is the print head alignment and basically what it's going to be asking you is to identify which blocks, um, in this case, with the least lines on them. So as you can see right here, probably in the first set, you have uh, number three has the least amount of lines and you have number five has no lines on, on section two. Section three, you have section three is no lines. And this will be different printer to printer. But if your image quality is suffering, this is another option that you can have. But obviously in your case, uh, if you're not even getting magenta, then you're going to be having problems. So we're going to go ahead and proceed. So in block one, we have number three is good. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. In block two, we have uh, number five is good. In block three, block three is good. In block four, block six is good. And block five, um, it's actually block five. And block six, block five as well. And block seven is block four. Okay, so the alignment is complete. So we went through matching those and that will help give us better print quality. So we have power cleaning, print head alignment, we're gonna, we just did vertical, now we're gonna do horizontal. Okay, so here is the horizontal lineup. Okay. And it's gonna say, choose rectangles that are not separated or overlapped. Okay, so this is a little bit more difficult. Because I'm not exactly sure Okay, there is some overlapping on here. This is a lot more fine of a process. There's still a tiny bit of overlap. Number three looks good. Number four looks great. So it's number four is the ideal. So we're gonna go ahead and there, it's already set there at number four, so that's good. Now, if those don't work, then you can find whatever image that you have that has a lot of that color. So run the deep cleaning process even two, three times and let it sit for multiple hours, even overnight. Go back and print a high, in, in Amber's case, a high magenta image. That may solve the problem. Um, if that doesn't solve the problem, it could be what type of ink and what brand ink I have had, especially with my HP over here, this wide format printer. Anything other than OEM inks have been an absolute nightmare and it continually uh, clogs my print heads. And these print heads are a hundred bucks a piece and there's like six print heads in this printer. It gets very expensive. So I will put a link in the description of what type of dye sublimation ink I've been using on the Epson that has been working flawlessly for me. Um, I do expect a clog when I don't use it, but if I was to print every day, even just one sheet, I shouldn't have the problem of clogged print heads. So I'm really sorry that you're having that problem. It is definitely not your computer that's causing a clog in, in the magenta. Um, but if you let it sit after doing the deep cleanings, try a magenta heavy image, something with a lot of reds, pinks, 
and uh, maroon, all that kind of hues, and see what happens. Now, I took a look. There's not really much to do on the 2720. Um, if you've seen my other videos on my channel, you know that I have videos on how to clean print, clean print heads. This is kind of a self-contained unit. It doesn't really give you access to the print head. Um, I would have done some other things, but it's just not possible. I will say, however, that if you are printing over Wi-Fi, or if you're printing in low quality, you always want to print high quality and have your printer connected via USB. Don't print over Wi-Fi or you are going to get lines. This is not going to help uh, Amber in her situation. But in general, if you're printing and you're getting lines, you your quality is either set too low or you're printing over Wi-Fi. And that creates a pause, a delay in the data transfer as the print head travels and as the paper feeds and you are going to see lines. I see it all the time. So I'm sorry if this doesn't help you out. I hope that it does. Um, you could have some air in your line and it would be difficult to tell. I'm just gonna show you on my printer. I don't have your exact model, but it's close. It's in the same family. So maybe that will be an indicator for you. You can see the ink lines on this one. Okay, with this down, we're going to go here Nozzle check, print, and okay, as you can see, the print head is moving over. Okay, so if you unplug the printer while it is printing, it lets you have access to the print head. This is the, this carriage carries the print head. And there is a little bit of play. In other printers, it's a lot easier. This one, there's not a lot of working area. Hopefully your 27, uh, 2760, I believe is what you said, is similar enough to mine. But if you took a damp paper towel, it doesn't have to be sopping, but you just put it down there um, so that as you slide this over, it sits on, the print head sits on the paper towel. Okay, that damp paper towel, I would use distilled water, let it sit for 20, 30 minutes, possibly an hour, and then take it, slide it, take it out, and then put the printer, plug the printer back in and turn it on after the paper towel is out. Then you can run some cleaning cycles and hopefully that will help you in unclogging your print head. So hopefully something that I've showed you in the video works and let me know in the comment section. Like I said, I'll put a, an, a link to the ink that I'm using. I haven't had any of those problems that you've had, but it doesn't mean I won't in the future, but that's what I would try. It's worked with my other Epsons that I've used. Uh, the 1430, I've done a lot of videos on that and that is a way to clean the print head. It does get a bit messy, but it works. So let me know if you uh, decide to go that route. Of course, this is all you. This is just me showing you what I would do. So please don't come back and say, I ruined your printer. You're doing this of your own choice, but I'm here to, to help or at least give some suggestions. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section, or if you have a better solution, I'd love to hear it. And so would everyone else in the sublimation printing uh, community. Thanks for watching.